4.4 solve ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero by factoring. Here's your comic of the day. In these questions we're going to factor just like we did yesterday. The only difference is that I now have a coefficient in front of my x squared term. So um, what makes 3x squared? My only option there is 3x and x. To make 8, you know, I could do 4 and 2. I could also do 8 and 1. And so I want to see what combination of that is going to give us 10 for my middle term. So I need the outer and the inner to add up to negative 10x. So like if I put an 8 here, then I would have 24 and 1. That wouldn't be very good. Uh, similarly, if I put an 8 here, I would have 8 and 3. So that wouldn't work very well. So let's see, if I put a 4 here and a 2 here, I would have a 6 and a 4. Oh, that's a 10. So see, I just try things out. And I actually don't do my signs till last, so I do the first, and then I tackle that last. And so I said 4 and 2 might work well. And so that makes this 4x, and that makes this outer 6x. And so if I had a negative and a negative, that would be negative 10x. And then always check your last sign to make sure it works. Minus 4 times minus 2 is 8. So that's how I factor this one. Let's do the same thing over here. In this case though, I have multiple ways to factor that 6x squared. I could have a 2x and a 3x or a 6x and just an x. I'm going to start with the 3x and 2x combination and see if I get anywhere. So I want to add up my outer and my inner so that they add up to just x. So I'm thinking that, you know, I want to keep the numbers really close to each other. I'm thinking I probably want to use my 5 and 3 factor. So if I put a 5 here and a 3 here, that would give me a 10 and a 9. Oh, that looks like it's going to work. Let's see if the signs work. 10x here, and the outer is a 9x, and so I want a plus x. So this would have to be negative, this would have to be positive. So the one that goes with the negative is this one, and the one that goes with the positive is this one. And so let's see, is the last term negative? Plus 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. So that works. Oh, the difference of 2 squares, my favorite kind, because this is just 9x times 9x, and this is just 5 times 5, and so I have 9x plus 5 times 9x minus 5. That's my easiest kinds, I think. Um, all right, this one, oh, look, that's 7z times 7z, and this one is 8 times 8. So I'm going to just see if it happens to be one of those where it's the same thing. So 7z, this is plus 8, and 7z plus 8. Let's see if that works. So that would be 56z, and this would also be 56z. Add them up and we get 112z. Yay, that worked. All right, let's try this one. I notice a perfect square here. I also notice a perfect square here. And when the perfect square is here and here, it doesn't mean that they always have to be either the difference of two squares or the kind where you just have a quantity squared. But um, since these are problems from the book, they all turn out so pretty. All right, three are and 3 are 11 and 11. Let's see if that works. That's 33R and that's 33R. And we want negative 66R. So that would be a negative and a negative. So if I put in a negative and a negative, then a negative 11 times negative 11 is positive 121. 
So yay, that works too. And remember, you could just write this as 3r minus 11, the quantity squared. That's a great answer too. And this also equals 7z plus 8, the quantity squared. They're equivalent. So now, when we want to factor this, well, look at this one. Um, before you start actually making your parentheses and factoring and all that, see if, um, first of all, if you can combine like terms. And then if there's anything common in them that you could factor out to make your life a little bit easier, that's always the best first step. So in this one, I see that there's a three in both of these that I could factor out. And that's the only thing that I could factor out. If I do that, then I'm left with x squared minus 300 divided by 3 is 100. And now I have the difference of two squares. Let that 3 just hang out and factor this guy. So that is just that x plus 10 and the x minus 10. Okay, same thing in this one. Let's see. I have a 4 that I could factor out of each of those. So let's factor that out first. 8 divided by 4 is 2m plus 28 divided by 4 is 7m. Oops, I meant squared. And then minus 120 divided by 4 is 30. And now let's let that 4 hang out and try and factor this. The only way to get 2m squared is a 2m times an m. And how could I get a 30? Well, a 6 times 5 is 30. So if I put a 6 here and a 5 here, that would give me 10 and 6. I can't make 7 out of that. So let's try the other way around. Let's try and have a 5 here and a 6 here. That would be 12. Oh, that's going to work. So we have a 12m here and a 5m here and I want them to add up to a positive 7m so plus 12 minus 5 is 7 so the minus would go here and the plus would go here and so that is my final factorization. In this one I could take out a negative 7t. That's in common in all of these. And I'm left with negative 7t squared divided by negative 7t is just t. And then negative 63t divided by negative 7t is plus 9. And I can't factor that any further, so that's my final answer. In this last one, I could factor out a negative 5 in which case I'm left with 5y squared minus 12y and then plus 7 and then let that negative 5 hang out and we could factor this into 5y times y and then let's see 7 and 1 well that would give me 5y and 7y and I want them to add up to negative 12y, so if I had a negative and a negative, I think that would work. Let's put it in a negative and a negative. Well, negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7. That works. So make sure, don't get confused about this, I'm letting this negative 5 hang out, so don't even worry about that negative 5. Just let it hang out and just worry about factoring this as if it was a problem all by itself. So factor it here. Okay, and so that is my final answer. Now, in these questions, we actually want to solve, and we're going to do so by factoring. So let's see, there's nothing in common in all three of them, so I'm just going to try and factor. All right, um, we could have 2x and 2x, or we could have 4x and 1x, and we might just have to do some trial and error here. So let's start with the 2x and 2x. And we have four combinations here. We could have 15 and 1, 1 and 15, 5 and 3, or 3 and 5. And so um, let's start with like 5 and 3. Does that work? Well, that's 6 and 10. That wouldn't work. Let's try 3 and 5. Well, that is 10 
and 6, that doesn't work. Actually, since these are both 2x, I don't even have to reverse these, right? Because if one way doesn't work, the other way is not going to work. They're the same. And so let's try our 15 and our 1. Well, that is 2 plus 30 or 2 minus 30. That doesn't work. So let me try my 4 and 1 combination. And so, let's see, let's try our 5 and our 3. That would be 12 and 5, aha. 12x and 5x. I want negative 17x. So I could have negative and a negative. And then you have to check your last term. Uh-oh, negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15. So this actually doesn't work. Let's try reversing 4x and x, that 3 and 5. Let's see if we get anything. 20 and 3x. Can we get a negative 17x out of this? Well, if I have a negative and a positive, oh, this is looking good. So the positive goes with these, and the negative goes with this, and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. So I've finally gotten to my answer. Um, and now I just have to solve it since I have the zero product property set each of the factors equal to zero. So that would give us 4x plus 3 equals zero or x minus 5 equals zero. In other words, 4x equals negative 3 x equals negative 3 over 4, or x equals 5. And we have two answers there. In this question, I want to first set it equal to 0 so that I could do something similar to what I did in part A. And so I'm going to scoot both of these over. So I'm going to add 14y, and I'm going to add 48 to both sides. And so I get 3y squared plus 36y plus 108 equals 0. Oh, and there's definitely a 3 in common in all of those that I could factor out. So I get y squared plus 36 divided by 3 is 12y plus 36 equals 0. And so let's just let that 3 hang out and try and factor. So we get a y and a y. This is going to just be a 6 and a 6. That would be 12 because 6 and 6 is 12. So that works. And now I said each of my factors equal to 0. But I can't have 3 equals 0, right? So that isn't something that I have to do. And then I have this y plus 6 equals 0. And I don't have to write it again because it's the same factor. And so I'm just left with y equals negative 6. And I only have one answer in this case. You want the garden to be made up of a rectangular flower bed surrounded by a border of uniform width, which will be covered with decorative stones. You have decided the flower bed will be 22 by 15. So let's draw that. 22 by 15. And your budget will allow for enough stone to cover 120 square feet. Okay, and look at the units there, square feet. That's indicating that this is something to do with area, because the area would be measured in square feet. So remember, the units can really help you out in problems. What should the width of the border be? So basically, they're saying that you're going to have this border around the garden and that's going to be filled with these stones. Okay, so the stones are all in there. But this has to be of uniform width. And so if this is x, then this would have to be x and this would have to be x and this would have to be x. That's what uniform width means. The width is the same everywhere. So that's the uniform width part. And the other thing is that the area is just of the stone. And the stone is surrounding the garden. 
So I might be thinking to myself that, well, let's see, what are the new dimensions? The new dimensions are, well, this was 15, so 15 plus x plus x, so that would be 2x plus 15 is this side, and this side is going to be 22 plus x plus x, or 2x plus 22. Okay, so my area of the entire thing with the stones is 2x plus 15 times 2x plus 22. But the whole entire area doesn't equal 120. Only the shaded part equals 120. So what would the whole entire area be? The whole entire area would be the shaded part plus whatever is inside of here. So that's going to be that 22 times 15, our garden, plus the area of the stone part, which is 120. That's the tricky part. And so let's just simplify out that right side. So 22 times 15 is 330. 330 plus 120 is 450. Okay, now, don't ever get tempted to say this factor equals 450 or this factor equals 450. No, that only works when we have it set equal to zero, so that's our goal. So let's first set it equal to zero. In order to do that, I need to simplify this side by foiling. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared plus the outer is 44x and the inner is 30x and the last is 330 equals 450. And so let's just combine like terms, which are those two, that would be 74x, and then subtract this 450 over, so that's minus 120 equals zero. Um, let's see, I can't divide this by four, but I could divide everything by two, so let me take that two out. And now let me just try and factor this. Oh, I forgot my squared again. All right, so 2x squared is 2x times x. And let's see, let's try maybe 3 and 20. Um, and then we would get 40x and 3x. Oh, that looks fabulous. Plus 40x minus 3x that would be plus 37x, and then negative three times 20 is negative 60, so that works. And so our answers would be that 2x minus three equals zero, or x plus 20 equals zero. And that would be 2x equals three, x equals three halves, or x equals negative 20, but could our width be negative? No, that doesn't make sense. So our only answer is 3 halves. So what should the width of the border be? It should be 3 halves feet. And that's our final answer. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.